the world as we know it breaks and crumbles in the blink of an eye beneath an incomprehensible force. The greatest volcano ever recorded has erupted furiously from the Earth's core, tearing the surface apart with unrelenting fury. The Earth trembles, swallowing towns whole, while billows of ash obscure the light. Fear grabs the hearts of millions as they scramble to avoid the impending disaster. This immense inferno's overwhelming strength casts a shadow of suspense and uncertainty over humanity's fate. Can we withstand nature's enormous might, or will we fall to its cruel wrath? Volcanoes are vents in the Earth's crust that over hours, days, or weeks spew lava, small rocks called tephra, or steam onto the surface of the planet. On the planet's surface, a volcano looks like a mountain or a huge pile of dirt with a vent on top called a cone. This form is the result of years of accumulated ashes, dust, lava, and other things erupting from the event. Earth is home to thousands upon thousands of volcanoes, the majority of which are dormant. While some volcanoes can be discovered on land, others are submerged beneath the ocean surface. Exactly what do volcanoes do underwater? Submarine volcanoes are another name for underwater volcanoes. Volcanic fissures that are mostly submerged in water are known as submarine or underwater volcanoes. Undersea volcanoes function similarly to their surface counterparts in almost all respects. Volcanoes that erupt underwater are most common in the Pacific Ocean and other deep marine regions. Some of them even frequent shallow water environments. How do volcanoes form beneath the sea floor? These submarine volcanoes can only be understood by first knowing how volcanoes on land are generated. The Earth is composed of three distinct layers, the mantle, the core, and the crust. Magma, a mixture of molten rock and gas, is the primary ingredient in the formation of the mantle, and thus of volcanoes. Fault lines are weak spots, holes, or cracks inside the Earth's crust. When the mantle is under intense pressure, especially in zones near faults, volcanic eruptions are more likely to occur. Lava, which originates from molten material deep within the Earth's mantle, emerges through these fissures during an eruption. The process of creating an underwater volcano differs little from creating one on land. Therefore, rather than producing volcanoes on land, submarine ones form when magma from the mantle layer seeps through fissures on the ocean floor. Volcanoes can also be formed as a result of tectonic plate collisions or separations. Scientists have compared the January eruption of the Tonga volcano, which was so spectacular, to the blow of a gigantic magma hammer on the volcano's underside. Seismic waves have revealed four distinct events, each of which is interpreted to represent a thrust of molten rock occurring beneath the submerged mountain. Results were presented at the American Geophysical Unit meeting in Chicago, and a paper detailing them was authored by Larry Paxton of the Applied Physics Laboratory at Johns Hopkins University in Laurel, Maryland. According to the results of this study, which were incorporated using Joel Ackenbach of the Washington Post, it is generally considered that one has entered the area of area once they have risen to a height of 62 miles above the surface of the Earth. According to satellite data, the Tonga eruption got so violent that water was thrown 150 kilometers into the air. The volcanic eruption not only ejected water into space, but it also caused tsunamis that swept across the world's oceans, completely reversed a west-to-east present day in Earth's ionosphere, 50 to 400 miles above Earth, and produced an amount of power that is believed to be equal to the most powerful hydrogen bomb ever detonated. According to a file published by Achenbach in the Post, these numbers are accurate. Larry Paxton, studying the space-Earth boundary, stumbled onto some item he shouldn't have. Paxton inspects the region directly below where he is standing using satellite-mounted equipment. By employing vision in moderate spectra, such as the far ultraviolet, they can observe rare space weather and other events that we cannot. But by the end of January, while scanning the area, his team discovered something strange. A section of the map had become opaque. As a result of molecules soaking up the far ultraviolet light, a dark spot formed that was roughly the size of the state of Montana. The Hunga Tonga volcano in the South Pacific eventually emerged as the ash cloud's obvious source. These molecules, which Paxton's company ultimately calculated to be enough water to fill 100 Olympic swimming pools, were propelled into the air at a speed higher than the velocity of sound using an explosion that changed into not like something that had ever been documented everywhere on Earth. 
This is a widespread amount of water to get ejected that excessive, Paxton said when he presented his findings to the American Geophysical Union a few weeks ago. Dr. Larry Paxton of Johns Hopkins University's Applied Physics Lab explained, If I see an absorber, if I see that hole, which means that something was given up above the boundary to space and sucked up those photons that might typically get sent to my sensor, somebody said, that crater was the size of Montana, Germany, or Japan. A year after the Hunga eruption, scientists studying nearly every part of Earth have had experiences very similar to Paxton's, in which they were astounded by some spectacular discoveries. In the past few months, scientists have documented the highest lightning awareness seen together with newly discovered vibrational waves that have ricocheted around the globe, inducing tsunamis in ocean basins that may be quite far away. National Center for Atmospheric Research scientist Holger Vomel claims that the newly discovered water molecules are the very peak of a massive plume that fills the overloaded environment with enough water to trap warmth below. Over the next several decades, this will likely cause the Earth to warm slightly. The explosion on January 15, 2022 was rather strange, but now professors are wondering, how great was it? A few underwater volcanoes have been detected in the arena's oceans, and the response may have consequences for them. The Hunga eruption highlights a new type of volcano and new styles of underwater threats, says volcanologist Shane Cronin of the University of Auckland. Even though only a small number of underwater volcanoes have been the subject of extensive medical study, the Hunga eruption has drawn attention to a new type of volcano and new types of underwater hazards. These include the long-active Kikumjeni volcano, located near the island of Grenada in the Caribbean, and the mysterious Axial Seamount, located a few thousand miles off the coast of Oregon and the subject of studies since the 1970s. Sensors focused on rumblings are constantly monitoring both locations, and research boats make frequent stops at both. Many, however, may only be reached by traveling to remote regions of the Pacific Ocean, far from the nearest major cities or ports where research vessels can seek shelter. Tonga and other nearby tiny island republics lack the resources to put up widespread seismic monitoring and accurate volcano tracking programs. Their susceptibility to botched herbal remedies is increased. This is because of the difficult conditions brought on by geography. Since Tonga is composed of a chain of islands, triangulating the locations of seismic wave resources presents a particular challenge. Countries with populations comparable to a major U.S. city may also have fewer available workers and fewer financial resources. The Seismic Monitoring Network of the United States Geological Survey is one such international option that provides worldwide coverage for niche geological pursuits. According to Jake Lowenstern, director of the USGS Volcano Disaster Assistance Program, the number of sites is sometimes too small and spread out to detect the milder rumbles that portend an impending underwater eruption. Options exist on a global scale, such as the seismic monitoring network run by the United States Geological Survey. Most volcanic eruptions are much less likely to result in a catastrophic lava flow like the one Hunga Tonga triggered. According to oceanographer Sharon Walker of the Pacific Marine Environment Laboratory, the experience did, however, serve to raise awareness of the potential for volcanic activity in these locations. While incidents like this do not take place very frequently, my impression is that we do not need them to take place on our watch, she was reported as adding. Hunga clearly showcased a recipe that became particularly explosive and may not have been easy to duplicate. The volcanic eruption went highly violent, with gas and ash, but it turned into still possible, as had been projected for the previous month and a half. The situation quickly became out of control after that. Cronin suggests that at least two distinct elements are working together to produce this effect. One of them evolved into the blending of magma from multiple underground sources with distinctly different chemical makeups. The creation of gases from their interaction increased the amount of magma that could be held within the rock's boundaries. The tremendous pressure cracked the above rocks, letting the cold seawater flow inside. Cronin claims that the seawater added the greater spice, if you like, and that as a result of the wonderful explosion, which was actually a series of smaller ones, trillions of tons of material were shot straight out of the top of the caldera, with some of it seemingly making its way all the way into space. Large waves were generated by both explosions in the ocean. According to Cronin, the greatest wave ever recorded may have been caused by water flooding into a cavity 
quickly carved out of the seafloor at a velocity of one kilometer per second. His comment, that's something virtually new for us, referred to a hitherto unmentioned category of potential danger. Researchers once thought that the only way a volcano of this type should truly cause a huge tsunami was if one of the facets of the crater dropped. The conclusion he draws from this is that undersea volcanoes are more diverse, and in some cases, more capable of displaying furious behavior. However, the method of reassembling the eruption's pieces has added to the already considerable challenges of studying submarine volcanoes. A large research vessel with a full crew might be used in a typical mapping expedition. This ship might have multi-beam sonar to map the bottom and look for changes and a battery of water sample equipment to look for chemical signs of ongoing activity. However, crossing an active caldera in a boat is dangerous, not because of the probability of an eruption, but rather because of the possibility that expanding gas bubbles will force the ship to capsize. Tonga's researchers have overcome this difficulty by using a fleet of autonomous and smaller ships. Cronin predicts that there will not be another major crewed assignment to Tonga within the next few years, despite the fact that the country has been visited four times in the past year due to an influx of study dollars to agencies examining the eruption. This is because organizations researching the eruption have been given funding. The cost is, without a doubt, rather high. Even if we limited ourselves to the volcanoes on the Tongan Arc, a thorough evaluation of all of them would likely take decades. Since these trips are one of the best ways for scientists to get close enough to truly watch how volcanoes are behaving, it is quite unfortunate that they will not be possible, as stated by Walker. It would be ideal if these missions received more funding, as well as expenditures in upgrading new technology, such as self-sufficient vessels, which are challenging to operate in the harsh open sea. In an ideal situation, this would be the case. Without them, researchers are limited to observing from afar. It is difficult, but not impossible, to observe events occurring below the water surface. Pumice rafts, sheets of buoyant volcanic rock that bounce on the surface of the sea, can be detected with the help of satellite TV for PC technology. As a result of the minerals released by volcanoes, satellite technology may also detect algal blooms. The United States Geological Survey and its Australian equivalent are also establishing a network of sensors near Tonga to enhance their detection of volcanic activity. Seismic stations, sound detectors, and webcams anticipating explosive eruptions will all make up this network of sensors. Maintaining its functionality may be difficult, says Lowenstern. Tonga must ensure that it has enough people to staff the centers and that the systems remain connected to data and power sources. He continues by saying that Tonga is only one of many Pacific Island nations that may benefit from outside support, but this is only the beginning. One of the benefits of this line of research is that scientists have discovered new volcanic features to keep a watch on at the Hunga volcano. To select which volcanoes require more attention, Cronin foresees a process that will likely take place over the next couple of years. During their final Hunga expedition in 2022, Cronin's team made use of the ship's amenities to explore two additional nearby underwater volcanoes. One of these volcanoes is located about 100 kilometers north of Hunga and has a mesa-like topology, similar to that of pre-eruption Hunga. These maps will provide a starting point for any future oceanographic expeditions that may be feasible. Scientists will now have a way to gauge how much action is taking place underneath the surface of the water and the rock. Cronin concluded that the sea was relatively calm. That's all for the video today. We'll be right back. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.